Okay Trekkies, it seems here on YouTube it is hard to escape the videos that are all about whether new Trek sucks or not. On this channel we are going to go over Star Trek lore and character bios. And in our very first one we will be going over none other than Khan Noonien Singh. Khan Noonien Singh was a dictator and an augmented human from the Earth's eugenics experiments that took place in the 20th century. Khan was born or created in 1959. He was the product of selective breeding and genetic engineering program called Project Khan. Based on the eugenics philosophy that improving the capabilities of a man improved the entire race. Augments produced by the program possessed physical strength and analytical capabilities considered superior to ordinary humans, and were created from a variety of Earth's ethnic groups. Khan's background was suspected to be Sikh, from the northern region of India. Now, I do know that there is some debate about when the eugenics wars took place due to the current retcon in Star Trek Picard and Star Trek Discovery. But we are going with what Khan himself has said, and putting the eugenics wars in the 1990s. We are also counting it as a separate war and not World War III. Not much is known about Khan's history pre-eugenics wars, and his childhood is especially vague. But we do know that the Augments rose to power and controlled a large portion of the Earth. In 1992, Khan became the absolute ruler of more than a quarter of the planet from Asia to the Middle East. The following year, a group of augmented humans followed in Khan's footsteps and seized power over 40 nations. The people of these nations were treated little more than slaves by the augment rulers. Khan considered himself a prince, but it is unknown how he viewed or treated those under his rule, although they didn't have much freedom under his rule. Khan's reign was different than the other augments, in that his reign enjoyed peace. The people were not massacred and Khan avoided war until his region was attacked. Khan did consider himself a benign dictator, one who led by gentle authoritarianism. This is why Captain Kirk referred to him as the best of the tyrants. Now the reports as to how the eugenics wars began vary. Some claim that humanity rose up against Khan and the other Augment leaders, and others believe that the Augment started fighting amongst themselves. The wars did have a devastating impact on Earth with entire populations being bombed out of existence. The Augments were eventually overthrown by humans who weren't genetically enhanced. Khan was actually the last of them to be overthrown. In 1996, Khan and over 80 of the Augments were sentenced to death for their war crimes. They were, however, able to escape their death sentence, a fact that the new government hid from the people in order to prevent panic. Khan and his followers were able to leave the Earth using an early sleeper ship, the SS Botany Bay. Genetic engineering of humans was ultimately banned on Earth as the concept was considered anti-humanistic by the Earth leaders. As a result of this, Dr. Stavos Koniklius was exiled from his community, which eventually led him to depart Earth permanently. The ban was placed primarily as an attempt to prevent another event just like the eugenics wars, and to ensure that humanity did not endure the wrath of another Khan. The ban on genetic engineering was challenged by the geneticist Arik Sung in the 2130s, when he stole some of the augment embryos left over from the wars, which were being stored at Cold Station 12. Sung believed that genetic engineering was the key to improving humankind and preventing illness, and that it should be given another chance. By raising the augments himself, Sung believed that he could prevent them from behaving like their brethren from the eugenics wars. His plan failed as the aggressive nature of the augments dominated, and they threatened to incite war and cause mass murder. Starfleet's mission to hunt down and capture the renegade supermen ultimately led to the destruction of the Augments, as well as most of the embryos. Not all the embryos were destroyed, though. Some found their way into the hands of Klingons, who, believing humans were improving themselves in order to conquer the Klingon Empire, attempted to use the DNA from the embryos to enhance themselves. The end result was a mutation of a highly contagious virus, that caused massive changes in physical appearance, biological structure, and even basic personality traits of a large portion of the Klingon race. Khan was not heard of again until the USS Enterprise discovered the SS Botany Bay in 2267. The boarding team found the augments in suspended animation. When Scotty turned on the lights, it triggered a revival of Khan and he began breathing, but his heart began dropping and inducing arrhythmias. So Kirk decided to open the cryo chamber and release Khan. When Khan came to, the first thing he asked Kirk was how long he had been asleep, 
which Kirk let him know that he had been asleep for two centuries. Kirk decided not to revive the others until he saw how things went with Khan. When Khan woke up in the medical bay, he took an old scalpel and held it to Bones' neck, wanting to know where he was, but Bones was not intimidated or scared of Khan's threats, and Khan eventually backed down, but he wanted to speak to Captain Kirk. Kirk arrived and he let him know that his people were still in cryo sleep, and that he was on the USS Enterprise. Kirk wanted information in return, but Khan would only tell him that his name was Khan, and would not tell him about the launch from Earth. After telling Kirk that he was once an engineer, he requested if he could learn about the ship, and Kirk let him know that he could learn all he wanted on the ship's library. Kirk and Spock then went on to suspect that Khan could have been one of the augments from the late 20th century, and Spock let Kirk know that there was about 80 augments that were unaccounted for at the end of the war, and Khan and his men could be those missing augments. Back in Sick Bay, Khan has a conversation with Lieutenant Marla MacGyvers, and Khan begins flirting with her in hopes to be able to manipulate her later. She then says that she would like to talk to him another time when he's willing to talk more about the past. Later, when dinner was getting prepared, Kirk spoke with Bones and was wondering how strong Lieutenant MacGyver's attraction was for Khan, because he knew it might pose a problem. At dinner, Khan would try to lie about his past and was very defensive about the time he came from and the dictators who ruled at that time. He slowly began letting glimpses of his true history out and Kirk and Spock easily picked up on this. Lieutenant MacGyver's returned to Khan's room and apologized to him for the questions of the dinner party. Khan then manipulated more of her feelings and made her prove her loyalty to Khan. After she begged to stay, Khan revealed that he would be taking control of the Enterprise and Lieutenant MacGyver's told Khan she would do anything he wanted her to do. The bridge crew was already on to Khan's past and figured out that the Khan on their ship was in fact Khan Noonien Singh, and Kirk decided to put out security detail and interrogate him. Once Kirk lets Khan know the jig is up, he finally decides to start giving up some information. But it is mainly just some self-aggrandizement, and Kirk decides to leave. But Khan uses his super strength and rips the doors open with his bare hands. He then makes it to the transporter room with the help of Lieutenant MacGyver's, and heads to the Botany Bay, where he awakens his other Augment comrades. While Kirk is on the bridge, the security lets Kirk know that Khan has escaped. Khan is down in engineering and he lets Kirk know that he shut off all escape routes from the bridge, and he also turned off life support as well. Leaving Kirk and the rest of the bridge crew to suffocate unless Kirk is willing to give up control of the Enterprise to Khan. Kirk and the rest of the bridge crew eventually pass out due to lack of oxygen. Khan takes the passed out crew and asks the crew to join them because he made a big error and does not know how to pilot or use the ship without them. So to try and sway them to his side, he shows them Kirk in a decompression chamber and lets them know if they do not help, Kirk will die. He then says that the Botany Bay will not get him to a planet to conquer. Lieutenant MacGyver asks if she's needed to be there to watch her fellow crew die. And Khan tells her no, but he wishes she would have been stronger. Suddenly, they lose the video feed to Kirk, and Khan says it doesn't matter that Kirk is already dead. Khan then tells one of his lackeys to take Spock next, but little did they know Lieutenant MacGyver's is starting her redemption arc, and saves Kirk from the decompression chamber. Spock hits one of the lackeys with his Vulcan nerve pinch, and they formulate a plan to take him down. They are going to gas all the decks but the one they are currently in, as the gas goes off, Khan makes a run for it and gets away to engineering. Khan and Kirk meet up for the final battle, which is kind of lackluster since Khan is supposed to be so much more advanced than humans. After Kirk gets the one up from him, hitting him with a pipe, they then put Khan on trial, and Kirk says that he is dropping all charges against him, and he will be dropping them on City Alpha 5. And he also gives Lt. MacGyver's the option to either face a court-martial or to go with Khan, and she does decide, of course, to go with him. Neither Kirk nor Starfleet followed up on the colony's progress, probably because Starfleet and the Federation records never recorded the colony as official. The starship USS Reliant attached to Project Gen Genesis and tasked with finding a suitable proving ground for the device finally arrived at the apparently lifeless world in 2285. Captain Clark Terrell and Commander Pavel Chekhov, the latter of whom himself was a former Enterprise crew member, beamed down to survey the planet they assumed was City Alpha 6, where they were captured by Khan. After using a pair of juvenile SETI eels on his captives, Khan demanded to know the nature of their mission and the whereabouts of James T. Kirk.
Using his captive's vulnerability to suggestion, Khan and his followers hijack the Reliant. Khan marooned the crew of the Reliant on City Alpha 5. With the knowledge of the awesome potential of the Genesis Project, he used Chekhov to notify Space Lab Regula 1 of Reliant's pending arrival and their intention to retrieve all Genesis information, as ordered by Admiral Kirk. Khan's lure proved successful. The Enterprise engaged in a training cruise at the time altered course to investigate the odd reports of Regula 1. Khan's lieutenant called out his superior on the beginnings of his obsessive behavior. Jochim suggested that he already had beaten Kirk by foiling Kirk's plans for him in the augments. Khan's reply gave the indication of the price that exile on City Alpha 5 exacted on his ability to reason. Arriving at Regula 1, Khan raged through the space station. He was seeking the now missing Genesis data and tortured those station crew members unable to escape the suspicious return of the Reliant. When they proved uncooperative, Khan slaughtered them. He then left Terrell and Chekhov behind, as they might prove a useful means to monitor Kirk's communications and follow his lead to Genesis in the event that the Enterprise reached the station. Khan intercepted the Enterprise, which was en route to Regular One, concealing her intent, Reliant approached feigning communication troubles and mounting a devastating surprise attack using the Reliant's phasers to cripple the Enterprise. Khan hailed to gloat over the triumph and discuss terms of surrender. His only reward proved to be Kirk's initial open mouthed stare of surprise. The parlay allowed the more experienced Starship Commander to override the Reliance tactical system using the ship's prefix code to access them. With a few weak phaser shots from the Enterprise, the Reliant lost photon control and war power, which would also disable the phasers, forcing Khan to retreat to Regula 1. After the Enterprise limped to the space station, a landing party led by Kirk rescued Terrell and Chekhov from the storage locker in which Khan had imprisoned them. After Kirk discovered the Genesis device in the bowels of the regular planetoid, Terrell contacted Khan, who beamed the device to the Reliant. However, Terrell fighting the effects of the SETI eel refused Khan's order to kill Kirk and instead committed suicide. Resisting the influence of his own SETI eel, Chekhov collapsed unconscious, and the eel crawled out of his ear to be immediately vaporized by a quick blast from Kirk's phaser. Despite the turn of events, Khan felt some small satisfaction, since Kirk and his party were now marooned within Regula, and the Reliant was on its way to find and destroy the Enterprise. Khan calmly but hatefully sneered at Kirk that he had done far worse than simply kill Kirk, and that he would redirect Kirk defeating him last time by leaving him in the same situation that Kirk left Khan all those years ago. In an open communication with Kirk, Spock's simple coded message, beginning with the signal, Ours would seem like days, led Khan to believe the Enterprise would need two days to effect basic repairs, unaware that Spock was actually telling Kirk that those repairs would be complete in two hours. After discovering his prey underway at full impulse power and bound for the obscuring clouds of the Matura Nebula, Khan's pursuit faltered on the advice of his lieutenant, who knew that pursuing the Enterprise into the nebula would disrupt the shield and sensor functions for both vessels. A surprise hail from Kirk alive and taunting from the Enterprise bridge threw Khan into a rage and his passions overcame him. Ignoring the consequences of engaging his enemy on the level playing field of the nebula, Khan spurred the reliance after Kirk. The Battle of the Matura Nebula was the last action of Khan's life. The two starships, barely able to discern one another due to the interference within the nebula, exchanged a series of near misses and solid blows, until the Enterprise caught Khan off guard by descending and then rising to attack the Reliant from behind. The Reliant was crippled and adrift with Khan's followers either dying or dead. Rather than surrender, Khan activated the Genesis device, hoping to take Kirk and the Enterprise along with him to oblivion. Unfortunately for him, Captain Spock managed to repair the damage to the Enterprise's engines, which allowed the starship to escape at warp seconds before the Genesis device detonated. Destroying the Reliant and Khan with it, Khan is one of the best if not the best villain in all of Star Trek. If you enjoyed this video please drop a like and consider subscribing, and let me know in the comments what character, lore, or Star Trek species you'd like me to go over next. Until next time.